you are. Just as I am. Just as we are. There is a great hymn about this that says, Just as I am. And the third stanza, it says, Just as I am, thou wilt receive. Wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve. Because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come. I come. Just as you are, go to God with everything in your heart, and He will help you. There's no time, there's no reason, there's no ability to become someone else. God calls us just as we are. Because the best that we can offer to God is ourselves. Another challenge for us is that we need to decide to seek Jesus until you find Him. Maybe you're here today and you're still seeking after Jesus. Don't delay. Don't stop seeking. Because if the shepherd gave up after a mile and said, Man, it's too far. Let's turn around and just go back to our sheep. But they didn't. They kept going. And they found the Messiah. And that's exactly what's being offered to you today. Like Peter and Andrew and James and John, after Jesus called them, they dropped their nets and followed the Lord Jesus Christ. Like Paul, you can say, I count everything else as stress so I can, I can have you, Lord. Like David, you can say, one thing I have desired above all others, and that is you, O Lord. And then Jesus tells us, you know, guys, it's not easy. The, the road to the kingdom of God is narrow and it's hard. And sure enough, it is. You know, as a Christian, we are not always in, in a good position and celebration because we all undergo problems and trials. But listen to what Joshua said before they crossed the Jordan. He said, you can... Go back, you can serve your gods and everything, but me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that should be our declaration this year. Me, the rest of my household, we will serve the Lord. And Philippians 1.21 says, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That's what the Apostle Paul declared before he went to be executed. He said, if you kill me, huh, I'll be in heaven with Jesus. If you let me live, I'll share the gospel with you. <laughs> so that should be our life verse as we, um, as we fulfill our vision later on as, as I share that with you. Philippians 1.21, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That can be attached to our mission statement. To know Christ and to make Him known. To know Christ is... To live, for me to live is Christ. And to make him known is for me to die is gain because we are declaring his name. And then another challenge, uh, the last one, we need to decide to tell everyone the good news. Be like those shepherds who declared to everyone what they have witnessed. They didn't go back to their, to their old job and said, okay, we're just going to keep quiet. No, they said, we have found the Messiah. Everybody should know that. And they declared that great news. And even those believers who just witnessed the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, they, they went everywhere and spread the news that the Lord Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. Acts 5.20 says, go stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. Beloved, as, as a challenge, as a conclusion um, for you, us today, as we start this year, today, being first day of 2017 and being the first Sunday of 2017, will you, will you be among those wise men who will seek Him this year and will serve Him like the humble shepherds. 
Will you experience and share the glad tidings of the gospel with others? The Bible tells us in Psalm 46 verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. When we focus on sharing the gospel, we need to be still and know that he is God. When we share the gospel, it's Jesus that we're sharing. If they reject us, they're not rejecting us, they're rejecting Jesus. And, and don't take it personal if they said, I don't believe what you're saying. Don't take it personal. They're not offending you. They're offending Jesus. Just be bold and say, hey, you, I want you to hear this. I want you to know about my Lord and my Jesus. And if they said, no, I don't have time with that, then go to another person. Don't be discouraged and say, oh, I'm not going to witness anymore because these people are just, just, just so close. And again, realizing and meditating and contemplating what happened last year is like, it just went so fast that it's like we're driving on a freeway running 70, 80 miles an hour and all of a sudden, 2016 is gone. What happens? What happened last year? Did we miss the beauty of Christmas? Did we miss the main message of Christmas? Have you taken the time to reflect on what happened even last month? Can you even remember what happened two weeks ago or a week ago during Christmas? When, when they came, when the shepherd saw the baby Jesus, what did they do? They knelt down and worship, right? When the wise men, the wise men coming from far away came, what did they do? They worship. And this is the attitude that I need and I want for us. The attitude of anticipation, expectation, and worship. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, I pray that this year, 2017, we would take time to hear you. That we would take time every day to listen to you, to open your word for us to hear your voice. And we would take time to slow down and get out of the freeway and just take the scenic route to be able to just linger in your presence and, and enjoy our fellowship with you. Help us, Lord, not to be preoccupied with our busy schedule, but let us be dedicated to, to listening and, and spending time with you and in your word. Thank you, Lord, for all the things that you have accomplished through us and in us. And we are excitedly looking forward this year, 2017, to the more, more challenges and more victories and even some defeats and, and, and troubles that we will encounter. But Lord, all of this are our stepping stone to our growth and our strength spiritually. I pray that you will continue to encourage us today until um, the end of this year again. But Lord, help us to take time to ponder upon what we have learned today from your word. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, not yet. <laughs> uh, we have more, more slides because I just want to take this opportunity to uh, cast out the vision that I have for you. And I have already shared this vision um, before the end of the year. So next slide, please. Um, we have been doing discipleship, our E12, for the past four, three to four years. And those years have been preparing us for this great, exciting opportunity to bring the lost, the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Next, please. So, this is the vision. Each one, reach one for Jesus this year. I know that some of you are still thinking, uh, can this happen? Well, it can happen because 
this is a God thing. I know that some of you have not even had the experience of even sharing the gospel. But don't worry, uh, help is on the way. So the vision is that this year we'll, we'll be able to reach one for Jesus, each one of us. So we have the, the whole year of 2017 to work on this. Um, as I announced last Sunday, the three of us, we have already the names that we have shared. And last Sunday, I received uh, 10, one person wrote 10 names, and it's in my office, like 10 names that he wants to be saved. So it's not only one, so there are like a lot. So it's not, you're limit, not limited to one, but the challenge is one. Okay, next slide, please. Um, Jesus commanded us in Matthew 28, 19. What is the command? Go and make disciples. So before you can make a disciple, you have to witness to that person first. Next, please. Um, now, go back, please. Okay. Um, how are we going to do this? I challenge you already. Uh, each one of us will write the name of a person. Uh, each one of us will pray for that person every day. Pray for the Lord to work in the heart of that person in your list. And then the next step is you develop friendship and be willing to go out of your way to show that you really care for her or for his salvation. And when the right time comes, present the gospel. Next, please. Um, after that person gets saved, introduce that person to our E12 right away. And if that person is not comfortable going to church right away, don't force him or her. Just stay with that person. I've, I've done that and it, it really worked. Uh, you don't invite a person right away to church because something might happen in the church and they, they will never come back and that they will not even um, uh, go to church anymore. And uh, um, I learned a lesson last year. I conducted a wedding uh, two years ago and that couple is not attending church. Uh, the, the, the wife is a Filipina. The husband is uh, from Dominican Republic, but he's born here. And I was doing them a lesson. When we came to baptism, they agreed that they will be baptized. And then after that lesson, all of a sudden, no more communication. They stop all of a sudden. And I don't know if they got scared of baptism, but, you know, we, we learned these lessons along the way. But I'm still praying for them. I'm still communicating. And hopefully they will, they will come back. Um, next, please. So these are the advantages of doing this kind of approach, the each one, which one. Uh, we have a specific target, one soul. We're not like throwing everything on the air. We're targeting one person, and that's our, our goal. We're not doing it aimlessly, and it, we're not limiting this to just a few of us, but every one of us. So we are all involved in this. Next, please. Uh, we will pray every day together. That's why we're asking for the names that you submit to us so we can pray uh, for those names. And then we will have monthly workshop uh, to help us be trained with this. Okay, I think that's the last one. Okay, so let us all get ready for the great harvest that is ahead of us. Then the, la the final one. Um, can we read this together aloud? Ready? Let us read. Oh, you can do better than that. Ready? One more time. Loud. Ready? Let us all reach one for Jesus this year. Amen. Praise God. Okay. That's all, Thank you, Pastor Sam, for the message and your vision and all of that. Uh, as I call the ushers, uh, we now reach our time for tithes and offerings. If it's your first time, please don't feel obligated to give. But if in your heart you find so, uh, please do. Uh, let's all bow our heads and pray for this right now. Lord and Heavenly Father, God, you truly do enjoy a cheer cheerful giver, God. And so through all of this, Lord, I pray that we're not, uh, our hearts aren't stiffened or in any way because, Lord, everything belongs to you. And Lord, we just want to give back to you in this time. So God, would you bless this time? Anointed in your name we pray. Amen.